Okay, following on from the trip in the park uh, to gather the leaves and foliage uh, for our experiments and artwork, uh, we're back in the studio now and we're going to create some work. Uh, we've got a range of materials as you can see on the desk, uh, we've got the leaves that we've gathered, we've got hammers, you can maybe able to find these in my uh, dad's workshop. Uh, if you're really, really desperate, you could go out into the yard and maybe find a little pebble. You want something with rounded edges, you don't want really sharp edges because they'll penetrate and rip the paper and possibly hurt the fingers. Uh, so something nice and rounded really works. Uh, then, from the leaves that you've chosen, okay, hopefully you've uh, picked some really nice coloured ones, as the, the, the video was saying. Uh, you're going to take each leaf, you can arrange it out onto the paper into a nice design, choosing your colours, get a range of colours, we've got lime green here, we've got like uh, autumn russet colours, okay, so you could bring in a design, it might be it might be very very linear, it might be completely abstract like this and just very 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 natural. The outcome of this is that we're making a card for someone, so it could be for ground, it could be for mum, uh, it could be someone who's in the hospital who's recovering, uh, but something, something sweet. Leave an area as well, around it where there's an area where you can put something written in, so a message or capture the text. Okay, so lay the work out onto the uh, onto the white paper, uh, veins, vein side down, so that's really careful, you need to look at it and choose it, so you've got the actual vein, if you look really closely at the leaf, you'll be able to see the pattern, the, the main stem with the, the little fronds coming off it. Arrange it again into a nice pattern, some of the leaves, okay, uh, want to do their own thing so you can actually take them off if they're not agreeing with your pattern or your, your idea that you want. Okay so just bear in mind that the leaves that we have uh, that you've chosen, you, you freshly picked them, you've only got a few hours or maybe a day to get the, the colour to pick them from them because the chlorophyll inside them uh, evaporates. So once you've laid your work out flat onto your paper, fold it over, and this is going to serve two functions hold your things in place and as we carry like in art you get two for the price of one you get two which is when you bookend it and open it up you'll have two pictures so you need to feel kind of rub through and you can actually see where just burnish it with your finger or the back of your nail and you can actually see where the leaf is okay so I can see the shadows on it there now and now I'm going to take my hammer and give it a bash really good quality cartridge paper. This is the inside of a cereal packet. If, if you want to, you can use the inside of the cereal packet and cut it down. We've also used the inside of paper bags. Obviously recycling bags in the supermarket at the minute because we're not using as many plastics. Really natural brown paper looks fantastic with print making on it. So I'm also now going to join in and my choice of leaf has some buds on it. What we just found out, the flatter the surface on the hammer gives a really good uh, actually done a little bit and because you've got your paper folded you can then automatically close it again to keep reprinting but you can open it up just to have a look at where your print making is up to so refold it Once you've actually got your print, if you leave that then to dry before you get rid of the dead leaves. If you move it too quickly, you'll smudge the colour because that is actually the chlorophyll which is creating the pigment on the paper. So Will and I are now going to go round to the other side of the table to some we created earlier. Okay, so moving on from doing the hammering experiment, these are some that Will and I prepared earlier. Uh, this is where you will be able to make, and we'll show you how in a minute, using 
bits of a paper bag that your mum might have bought some vegetables in or any papers that you've actually got um, at home uh, to make the greetings cards out of. These are pure prints. This one, as you can see, has got some highlighted detail using graphite pencil. This one has actually got some detail using biro and graphite pencil. And as Will said before, just a little captions. We're all at the minute on our daily exercise doing a walk in the park um, or a walk along the street. As you are aware, the artist that we're looking at um, lives in New York, but she gathers her flowers and weeds from local parks and all around New York. Little notes to people at the minute. Forget me not. It's very, very easy at the minute, isn't it, to sort of think of uh, being isolated. Being isolated. Um, but sending a little greetings card to somebody with the forget me nots on. With the forget me nots on and actually uh, doing some detail on it and sending a little message. And again, of course, a lovely one there. Miss you. So Will and I now are looking at how to take you through your print making with the leaves and the weeds and the flowers that you've actually hammered out into prints which all look pretty beautiful. Will's already started adding some detail here and I'll let you talk I'll let him talk you through there. Everybody's got a black biro at home. All you need is a black biro and a graphite pencil. That is all because all your pigments are actually in your leaves and your plants. Anything you want to say there Will? Uh, it's just really all about experimentation. Um... You know, no two, no two pictures will come out the same. You never know what you're going to get. So it's about experimenting. So on this one, I, I dampened the paper with some water, and then did the did the uh, um, the crushing technique and tried to get the impression of the leaf come off. Obviously, you get you're going to get blurred edges then. So maybe that's something. But it's, it's worth trying because you can see what the colours do. What it, one thing it does do is dilute the colours. Uh, if that's happened, you can bring back the detail by using fine line pens. And again, you'll, if, the, if the paper's damp, you'll get a nice bleeding edge on it and almost like a transparent thick, uh, look here where it's almost like you can see through the leaf. Whether you're in year seven or whether you're in year 10, to think about how you can improve your level in art. And one very, very quick and simple way to do it, here, this would be a very, very lovely uh, level three stroke four piece of work. It's lovely printmaking, but there's nothing additional added to it. Once you start getting on to adding detail, like biro, uh, fine liner pen with bleeding, graphite pencils, and starting to put some elements of shading in it, you're automatically taking it up by at least one level. You're looking at here, already this piece of work hitting some very, very comfortable level five. Uh, assessment objectives so keep that in mind because you can keep working on this and remember please bring it back into school because it needs to go into your art portfolio just you placing that over there to give me an idea then Kerry that it might have been one piece that you've done earlier maybe the day before and it's dried out uh, and it's kind of got no home to go to but again on this if there's been a little mistake or something in an area that hasn't worked you could place that over there and as Kerry was saying the fact that you, you're adding multiple images and uh, like an applique type of collage method, uh, it, it's going to uh, improve your grade as well. So give that a try as well. You know, you can change the position of something to make your eye look in different directions. If you look at the top of the printmaking, and we will shut up in a minute and let you get on with it, there are four different pigments here taken from some of the plants that we've actually collected, uh, some of the leaves that we've collected. There are two very distinct greens. The bluey one, believe it or not, was the purpley plant on there. It doesn't look remotely purple um, and comes out as a lovely blue wash. So experiment in your garden. Weeds, dandelions are beautiful, that lovely, lovely bright yellow and that really does stay bright bright yellow doesn't it? Yeah we found that you don't have to go into, it's nice if you can go out into the woodland but if, if you can just go into the corner of your garden there's always a weed growing or there's a, like Kerry said a dandelion or something with a little bit of colour in it you know you can bring that indoors. Uh, one of the things I would say about the plants is don't don't completely shred them 
uh, just take a few leaves off them, otherwise you, you'll totally kill the plant. But if you just take, if you just pick a few of the best, better leaves and leave some on, you know that's that's good for for the rest of nature as well. Then, so the plant can carry on living its cycle. And if you go back to the original PowerPoint, uh, as I said earlier, Will and I, one of our favourite artists that we look at uh, is the Japanese artist Kazumi Takara and her work is very, very inspired by anything botanical and as I said, her journeys around New York inspire all of this. Some of the pictures, go back, research her, have a look at what you can find out about her but more importantly, have a look at the techniques she uses because this is it. Um, if you can then, when you come back to school, relate the work that you've done on that artist and the work you have produced it will show a really, really personal response, which is one of the ones where you can actually gain a lot of extra marks in your personal response objective in terms of your GCSE. These are all ways that Will and I will be, able, will be teaching you over the next couple of years, ways to use techniques and improve your level uh, so that you'll be getting up there, hopefully, with some level eights and nines. That's it. Thinking about the materials as well that you use, and obviously we're working on quite high quality paper that we have at the school. Uh, if you're really desperate for paper, um, you know, look around, try try some blank newsprint. That's one of the other things that we've been using is we found an old cardboard box, and again, if you, if you open it that way, you get a nice sort of natural colour into the paper. And again, it if this is used and put onto there, again it improves your marks because it's showing that you're experimenting with different sort of mediums and backgrounds and uh, textures. I mean some of the paper you might want to even tear some of the edges to the paper and put your print on there as well. And again it will give you, you can glue that down now with some print stick, put your print on and you'll see two different variations where it's gone from the white paper onto the brown paper and it'll just give that little contrast. But showing that you, you're experimenting, that's what it's all about. This is about having fun as well. Mm. And using those, I'm serious, we've talked about before, looking at the bags that everybody's recycling at the minute, the brown paper bags that you get your vegetables in. Don't throw them away, save them. They're beautiful to print on, especially when you're using really, really colourful, distinctive um, plants. If any equipment that you need, we, we may be able to get them out to you at your, uh, as part of the drop-off that we're doing. So. Let us know if you need some of that print stick, we can do that, that's fine. Um, also remember, when you're going out, there are lots of lovely apps, free apps that you can get on your phone at the minute, that you can actually point the, your phone at the plant that you're actually picking, that you're going to print with, and it will actually identify what the plant is. You can then log what that plant is, and then again, to improve your level in art, if you can identify and write what the plant is, at the side and what technique, what technique you've used, even better. So, have fun!